start putting this thing back together parts are slowly rolling in um, I, the hoops are all painted they've been out for two days to dry because um, it is an enamel paint I still use the uh, like Japan dryer in it uh, to speed it up it did dry quite well um, but <clears throat> the paints kind of thick I sprayed these on these are two coats it's on here so we're gonna go in and I picked up there's a couple of the uh, nuts that hold these onto the baler and they're called panel nuts and I picked these up these are for quarter 20 bolts they're uh, for panel thickness of 0.125 through 156 um, <clears throat> the uh, and I'll show you where those go a couple of them were missing and the previous owners had put uh, regular nuts in there which makes it really uh, tough to get in there with a wrench and hold the back side so these are called panel nuts that's what's in there and I happen to find them at McMaster car so I'll show you where these go alright these are the uh, the parts where they mount to this is the hook portion of the panel nut um, hopefully you can see this through the bag um, the they got little hooks and down here where you can actually see saying that's the back side of the panel nut um, like I said, and what is designed is for slight misalignments the nut can move around inside this pocket so I have quite a few of them that are missing so I ordered a pack of them they come in a pack of 25 uh, and I ordered those to replace those in there and so we're gonna get those put in so we can get the uh, the tines back onto the roller cage here and then put the hoops on so when I get that all done we'll come back all right we have uh, the bushings installed in the uh, feed fork spring assemblies uh, they look came out really nice said so this is the one that I made that I'm required to make a, a back plate for so that's on there um, there's a huge difference in the actual hole diameters of these items I mean these are just two of the bearings the original bearings and you can clearly see how much more worn out the original bearings or the bearings that was in it in comparison um, to that so yay these are mounted these are ready to go in um, waiting for my uh, crank the inboards uh, crank come in from Walt's tractor should be in today so we start getting this thing back together all right we have the uh, gearbox all assembled um, I've put new bearings in uh, ball bearings in here these are like a sealed shielded bearing um, I'll have a link in the description of the bearing number so if you want to replace yours you can go ahead and pre-order them um, these are the plates and the shafts that I got from Walt's tractor um, really kudos to Walt's tractor I really needed those plates and he came through with me with just replacing with the, the shafts um, I use uh, Lucas oil it costs for 90 weight this is the gear oil it's also good for high point gears which is mentioned in the uh, owner's manual so that is the oil that I used in that um, fill through the top and this is the weep hole for when it's topped off um, I use these do not have any sort of paper gasket or gasket material um, they use from the factory they use some sort of like uh, sealant um, which is familiar or similar to this three bond gasket material um, it's 1184 you can get them on eBay Amazon uh, this is really good stuff I use it on my motorcycles for uh, joining uh, crankcase halves together or uh, most you know any kind of oil, engine oil uh, or fuel uh, sealer the stuff's a resistant to that stuff so it's really a good sealer um, and this this tube lasts forever I mean I've had I've built a couple bikes with this a lot of a uh, couple case seals um, it, it doesn't go bad it does get clogged up on the end but it or the end doesn't plug up but the threads start getting kind of stiff to take it off other than that it's uh, a really good sealer um, but that's what you use you smear it out there you got about 20 minutes of working time with it bolt it together boom it's all done so this gearbox is ready to install and we're waiting on as UPS to deliver my uh, feed fork crank that's coming also from Walt's tractor today 
Hey everybody. All right, we're starting to get this thing put back together. Um, I just got the thing timed, at least timed the feed fork assembly. I wanted to go over that a little bit if you've never timed one before. Um, you're going to want to start out, you're going to make sure that the main chain is off. You got to take this chain off here. Of course, this would most likely be off, uh, be off because you have to time uh, one after another but so this chain off this chain off you're going to be wanting to have the plunger coming back on the return stroke and you're going to measure at the blade i measured right where the second or that bottom screw is to the back side of the plate here or the plunger opening and you want that to be six and five eighths inches so you'll drive the the return stroke until you have a measurement from the edge of the blade to the opening uh, six and five eight inches once it's there then you can hand move this feed fork and measuring from that same point to the point of that needle can be no more than 13 inches um, mine ended up being like 12 and a half inches is what I did it at and then once you have it there you try not to touch everything uh, or you put your main chain back on once that's done then now this section is locked it won't move the the first fork and then after that um, when it comes about if I'm not mistaken when it's perfectly in the time that time the actual timing dot in the sprocket is down low already so then from this point to this point for this timing this one's going to be a hundred this crank is going to be 180 degrees out from that one so if this one's pointing up that one's going to be pointing down but the other way to tell is um from the hole the hole is in between basically these notches and two of those notches fit or two fingers fit inside in between a link so this link's going between two holes so when i when i did it it's 29 links from the, the hole being in the center of a link to around here it'll be tw a total of 29 links and then that hole will be in the center of the next section. And then that's how you time that fork to that fork. So anyways, this is all uh, done here and it's timed. I've already actually ran through it and you'll see how it works. If you go more than 13 inches, what happens is there's a potential for a collision with the uh, plunger. If you go less than 13 inches, um, it just means it's going to clear faster from the plunger. Um, so as the plunger starts to come back, the fork is lifting up above the plunger when it's, whenever it's doing it. So once you start to do the timing, you'll, you'll see how it works. Um, and it's pretty simple to do. Um, so next, now that this is done, um, I've already started to, uh, put the, new bearings in um, all the new bearings are in place uh, some new hardware on there um, the u-bolts are still the original because um, those are a special size u-bolt you can't just go to your hardware store and get some um, you'd have to you can get some but they're gonna be too wide of a space these need to be like an inch and five eighths in between and the uh, ones you get store two inch and then it, they, they come in increments like that so it's hard to find one so I, I was able to use the original ones they weren't bad uh, but new uh, new bushings are in uh, brand new carter pins because that carter pin is what caused this whole havoc in the first place it, it, to break and then caused the problem um, the pillar block bearing those are kind of a oddball size this particular pillar block bearing that's in here i happen to have it from my go-kart days this is a uh you might have to go to a go-kart store in order to find them because they're the 
the thickness of the original bearing and um, the right diameter for it to be enclosed in here and swivel really nice. Um, the only difference is, is it's got the set screws built in. I'll see if you can see it on there. Um, the shaft go, the of the bearing, the inner race goes out really long. And you can see it's got set screws on it right here. I ended up adding the collar back on there um, just to have a backup because that collar is what keeps that crank from going that way and if it goes that way you're going to collide with the side of here there's nothing that holds it on that shaft of the gearbox so if those collars aren't on there the crank's going to drive that way and you're going to have a collision and be all over again so being a little scared that i am um the original doesn't have set screws in that inner race it only uses that single set screw on that collar. But the nice thing is with that go-kart bearing is it's got two set screws on it. And so I have the extra collar and the set screws on that inner race. So anyways, that's a go-kart bearing. It's an inch and a quarter shaft. Um, and the width of the outer race is three quarters of an inch. That's pretty important because the, because the two uh, panels that hold it together um, if you go too small, it'll be the bearing will be way too sloppy in there. So um, that, like I said, go, uh, go kart bearing. I've tried Messix; they did, could not, they didn't have them in stock anymore, or couldn't get them, and that's what it was. It ended up being a go kart bearing. So hope that helps you. Other than that, now we, that that is timed, um, I got to start uh, timing the uh, um, needles, and then after the needles, um, she's. Pretty much just needs a few things put back together. Um, I had, was messing with the uh, uh, setting the plunger. And when I did, I ended up breaking another old bolt. So I got to machine another one to go in here. Like I said, that's a special tapered uh, bolt. I've had to make a few of them already. Just trying to get the uh, old ones out or, or loose enough to be able to make adjustments. So that's what happens when you got this old equipment. Um, you just have to make things if you have to. Okay, it's a new day. Uh, some more work done. It's pretty much wrapped up. I'm almost ready to start putting covers back on. But I got the uh, timing chain, or I got the baler timed. Um, and that's all uh, functioning correctly. I made some improvements, modifications to the uh, uh, needle drive assembly. Um, when I was timing it, there's so much, so much slop in this rod coming up into here and the bushings were in fairly great shape. Um, but this rod, when it would actuate, would move in and out dramatically and that would change the, the timing. It could change it up to about an inch. Um, so what I did is had a heavy washer and... I tacked it into place and then set everything and then finished tacking it around to remove the excess slop. There's still a little bit in there, so it's got pl plenty of room to move. But man, that made a huge difference on how this thing functions. You know, it was like every other time or every third time or whatever, this would never get in this notch. It would always be right above or it's because of the slop. But since I did that, it functions the, uh, the the needle snaps in there gets out the timing stays accurate all the time but if you've never timed one before um, so you're gonna keep this chain off um, or you can cycle it with it and you want to because you're not bailing hay <clears throat> you're not worrying about breaking the needles because the needles naturally recess into the plunger and the plunger is only going to go in so far so <clears throat> you trip the baler run it counterclockwise on the wheel until you get this the needle is protruding inside about a quarter of an inch and then on the plunger itself there's those little triangle protrusions that stick out you're wanting to be at least one to two inches behind those protrusions i generally set mine 
um, to the uh, needle is basically where the protrusion is almost flush with the uh, um, the needle. So um, that's basically protecting the needle when it comes forward on the compression stroke uh, from the from any kind of extra hay. If the needle was too far in uh, with a bunch of hay, you would snap the needle off. So you're the being behind the protrusion is keeping the hay off of the needle as it goes up into the uh, bale chamber. So, anyways, um, so when you set it, like I said, you'll do it. You may have to, may do it once or twice. So when you keep your master link in a good accessible position um, when it runs up. And then once I got it set, I would cycle it a couple times. Uh, you know, tripping the knotter and cycle it again, and make sure that I was uh, keeping an accurate uh trip and uh timing on that so all good here um, we've got the belt drive back on i've already ran the machine um, everything's functioning as it should so i believe that this if yours is worn i believe either it'd really be nice to have a hem nut on here and a shaft then that might be a future upgrade for me is actually machine a shaft and uh put that in and then run a hem nut on there um, that would get rid of all of the inaccuracies in it um, but as i stated before just putting that washer on there was a huge advantage for it so anyways um and also you know the inside here the, um this little follower the the pin was really sloppy that holds the little wheel in there and when i took it apart the, the shaft just really fell out um, and I luckily I have a lathe so I put a knurling bit because it was knurled at one time um, the knurl had been flattened out so it made it really sloppy um, between the slop in the wheel and the slop in that um, it was really sloppy so I uh, re knurled the end and then press fit it back in position and took a whole lot of slop out of the system and I the other pin which is behind this washer somewhere in here which is the hinge pin for this lever um, I re knurled that one because it had to press that out so I could get in there and actually press that new pin back or that refurbished pin back in place so anyways that's it for this um, I think we're pretty much wrapping it up I got a few more covers to put on and then we got ready to do some uh, hay baling all right we got it running running on the old Ford 3600 got all the tines moving New bushings are doing great on there. Um, covers all on. And put the knotter. I had a small collision earlier. All good there. Yeah, I had to trim the cover. Hit right there, knocked the cover off. So it's all good. Awesome. She's ready to make hay now. Thanks for joining in, watching us. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next vid.